Hello YouTube, my name is Murray Carter from cartercutlery.com. Welcome to another one of our series on our Japan Cutlery Tour. This is part three called Carter Cutlery Best Scissor Factory Visit. In this video, we're going to be showing you footage from our recent visit to the Shozaburo Scissor Factory in Tokyo, Japan. My relationship with Shozaburo Scissors spans back almost the full 22 years of my bladesmithing career. As a village bladesmith in Kumamoto, Japan, where I lived for 15 years, I took in many scissors for sharpening and repair. Majority of those scissors were made by Shozaburo, at least the finest scissors were made by Shozaburo. And the reason why a lot of people brought them in to be sharpened was because they had the advantage of being assembled with a, a nut and bolt uh, system so you could take them apart for complete refurbishing, polishing, and sharpening. After I moved here to the United States, I thought that uh, marketing Shozaburo scissors here in the United States would be a, a very uh, successful business plan and I never encountered such a high quality pair of scissors before so I really wanted to be in, involved with them and associated with them. So I started making some cold calls to the factory in Tokyo from Oregon where I was currently living because I, while I was in Japan although I encountered their scissors all the time I actually never met the owners or anybody who was directly associated with their factory or product. So it was kind of humorous actually the first cold call I made to their factory from Oregon. Uh, I mustered my best, my most polite Japanese and uh, when someone answered the phone on the other side I went into this five or ten minute spiel as I was Murray Carter, I'd spent 18 years in Japan and that uh, I knew how to make knives and sharpen knives and refurbish them and that I sharpened scissors hundreds of times and that I was really interested in representing their scissors over here in North America and then the person on the other end of the phone said um this is the factory I'm just a factory worker maybe you'd like to speak to somebody <laughs> who's responsible they won't be in until tomorrow <laughs> so so uh, I hung up the phone and, and called him again the next day and uh, went into the same spiel again. Fortunately, this time I was actually talking to the, uh, to the owner's son, so it had an effect. So they were very kind and gracious on the phone and they said, okay, next time you come to Japan, come and, and visit our factory and we'll continue this conversation. So when I went to Japan in December of 2009 with my family, actually it had been the first trip back to Japan in five years after moving to the United States. Uh, I visited their factory and at first it was very formal. They sat me down there in their little office between the in the little sofa area in the office with a little coffee table. Now Mr. Miura Sr. who is the company president, he was kind of in the background sitting at his desk where he could overhear the whole conversation and Mr. Miura Jr. Uh, who is the third generation in that family of scissor makers. He was the one who interviewed me at this coffee table on the sofas. And uh, the questioning in the beginning was very formal and I uh, wanted to know my history and uh, what I knew about bladesmithing and the knives I'd made and my exposure to scissors. And for about an hour there was, it was, there was some tension, some static there in the air. You could almost cut it with a knife. And uh, after about an hour Mr. Miura Sr. He stood up from his desk and he came over and I guess uh, I had shown enough expertise in what I do to convince him that I was serious about representing their scissors because then he started showing me all the scissors in his display case and he was explaining to me that they were made with you know white Hitachi white steel number one and I was able to say yeah that's the steel I use too and he was saying yeah this is the way we laminate and I said yeah that's the way I laminate mine too and, and uh, pretty much it was within about three minutes it was like uh, two old friends talking. He just really warmed up and softened up to me, and uh, you know, really, it was like two craftsmen just, just uh, sharing a, a, a moment of uh, camaraderie, bonded together by our common experience with forging Japanese steel and and uh, making it into a, a finished product for for sale. Well, anyway, the uh, end result of that two-hour meeting that first time was that they 
cordially invited me back to Japan with the express intention of getting some intensive training in their factory from their uh, technicians on how to grind the scissors. First of all, to get an overview of the whole process of how these scissors are made. And then for me personally to get my hand in on some grinding and some polishing and some assembly and some final tweaking and final adjustments of scissors to get them so they would cut just perfectly. On a side note, between the first trip I took to their company headquarters for the interview and then my subsequent trip 10 months later in October to their factory to get this intensive training, I had already started selling Shozaburo scissors at home and in an effort at promoting them and their excellent metallurgy, I had actually shaved with a pair of their scissors. And then we published it on YouTube and you can see there's links, shaving with Japanese scissors. And I gave them a link by email all the way to Japan and they had gathered all of their staff around, I guess, a, 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 a computer monitor and they all watched me shave with their scissors and I guess it was a real chuckle. They, they had a good time out of that. Well, what do you think, guys? For a shave with a pair of scissors. Yep. That's, happiness is a pair of sharp scissors. So here in this footage, you see our first introduction, our whole group sitting at the coffee table and uh, in, getting, being introduced to Mr. Miura Sr. and Mr. Miura Jr. And you'll see we have on the table a whole bunch of scissors laid out and they're explaining the process to myself and to the whole group on how the scissors are made from the uh, welding of the mount steel to the carbon steel to the uh, forging of the whole blade blank to the cutting out and to the grinding and to the polishing the heat treating etc. From the office we must have had at least an hour long meeting in the office. From the office they started to tour us around the factory proper and it was a few different levels we went and visited every single corner of the factory. We saw sand blasting stations. We saw automated grinding stations. We saw the factory workers grinding and polishing different parts and components of the scissors. Then, after we had seen every corner of the shop and had the whole process explained to us, Mr. Miura uh, Sr let me try my hand at different stages of the process. You'll see wow. me here uh, doing the sand blasting and, and doing some finishing and final steps on some of the models of scissors. And then here in this stage, at this scene, you see me sitting next to Mr. Miura Sr. learning how to grind the backside of scissor blades. And it was with uh, a little trepidation that I was sit there with the master as he was watching me do something that I was more or less unfamiliar with. I've made more than 15,000 knives. My hands are familiar with the motions in knife making, but scissors I've probably only sharpened and reground three or four hundred pairs of scissors. So it was still a, it's still a fairly unfamiliar feeling. And while I understand it in theory, uh, you know I certainly couldn't do it with the fluidity and efficiency that he and his workers could do because that's what they've been doing for 40, 50 years. He said in his factory they had a handful of workers who had been there for more than 40 years making and assembling scissors. That speaks volumes to me of their leadership and of the way they run their business that their employees would stay with them so long. So here in this footage you see him sitting next to me, Mr. Mura Sr., guiding me through the process of grinding these blades. I'm telling you guys I was burning my fingertips off. I, I tried to be manly about it and, and, and not to whimp or whine, but I had blisters on my fingers that evening. You have to do that with just the right amount of speed to get the grinding done and get the blade cooled before you burn your fingers. And that was a, that was a, uh, a skill I didn't really develop in the one day I was there. I ground about 10 different pairs of scissors and I think I got two or three of them, you know, uh, fairly well. I did a fairly, a fairly good job at them, but seven pairs he had to come behind me and kind of help me along and, and fix some of my mistakes. But towards the end there I was really catching the hang of it. And uh, from the grinding station we progressed to the assembly 
and tweaking bench. We have a lot of footage of me sitting there assembling scissors and having Mr. Mura Sr. coach me and guide me through that whole process. It's difficult. I, I sensed his anxiety and frustration as a master craftsman sitting there watching me try to do a job at one quarter the speed that he could do it at and then and then not even as accurately or as well done as his and so uh, I tried to you know move along as quickly as I could but there's a feel that you have to develop with those scissors in order to get them cut just so and I would imagine that you would need to assemble probably at least a thousand pairs of scissors before you got to be a real master but the scissors that we assembled they cut really well when we we're finished I was going from past experience plus you know uh, assimilating the knowledge and instruction that he was giving to me right there in the spot and I wasn't completely lost you know I was I was kind of keeping up to speed with his instruction and I felt like I benefited a lot and uh, since coming back from this trip to Japan and from the scissor factory I've been able to sharpen and uh, refurbish several pairs of scissors again the Shozaburo scissors and I think I really was able to internalize the information he conveyed to me after several weeks of really kind of thinking about it and then working with other scissors the visit to the scissor factory was just outstanding all of the crew even though most of the other guys there were just kind of standing around watching they said they were fascinated by it and I kept asking them, are you guys okay you're not bored sitting here just watching me do all the work and they said no this is fascinating this is great and so it really was a successful trip and then out of the kindness of Mr. Miura and his son's hearts they took us out for a gourmet meal at a shabu shabu restaurant uh, must have cost hundreds of dollars I mean it was a real treat and you know kimono clad servers who would come and kneel down at the door to open the door and see my son and you're really super polite and we just had a great time it was a great first meal in Japan everyone thoroughly enjoyed themselves and uh, it was uh, it was a really fine experience and we were sad to say goodbye to Mr. Miura Sr. and Mr. Miura Jr. Well, we look forward to a long and uh, productive and profitable relationship with the whole Shozaburo factory from here in the future. And uh, I look forward to taking future guests to visit their factory again. Mr. Miyar was telling me that many of the workers here have been here for over 40 years. 40 they've, been, years. they've been working and making scissors since they graduated from school. Wow, that's awesome. See, the hammer is polished round. And they're going to hammer it in this depression here, and, and, they'll, and they'll bend. They'll use this to bend the scissors the way they need to, just like I use a stick to straighten oh, yeah. the kitchen knife. It's very difficult. Like, it gets like I'm burning my fingertips off. Really? You better believe how hot these are getting. If you're interested in any of our future Japan Carter Cutlery tours, you can contact us directly at murray, M-U-R-R-A-Y, at cartercutlery.com, or just go to our website, cartercutlery.com, and you'll find links on there. You can read in our archived newsletters, uh, reports from our trips to Japan, you can read about our, our scissor experience or anything knife related. It's all there, cartercutlery.com. We'll see you for part four of Carter Cutlery Japan Tour.